All right, I'm back. My bad. I had to make a, another beginning. Uh, like I said yesterday, every day, good morning. Should have became a teacher. But like I said yesterday, ROTC, join it. Young black men, women, young black kings, queens, young black, young ladies, gentlemen, join it. If you're in the inner city, if you're not in the inner city, wherever it is, wherever you're at, just join it. Air Force, Army, whatever it is, just join it. So it's just a class. You learn different things about it. Join any class, matter of fact. Join any of these classes that you have that's different from what you may not be used to or what you may not understand. If a teacher or a school is putting you in the classroom, mind you, I didn't ask ROTC. If um if they're putting you in there, just take it. Your friend is in there, oh well. I had friends that wasn't in AP classes and I, I wasn't in uh, my friend's AP classes. It happens, so whatever. Um, looking back on it, it was like, it was not a big deal. Growing up at the time, it felt like a big deal. I hope y'all listen to me. I hope it reaches somebody eventually, that because I really feel that's important. Everything I say in these videos, I really feel like it's important. I wish it gets to the young people. Um, next, you guys are not victims. We are not victims. When you're going to these schools, when you're going to school period, let your parents know what's going on. I'm talking to my people right now, my young people real quick. Um, my young melanated people real quick. Let your parents know. Let us know what's going on. Mind you, we'll, we will ask you every day. We're asking for a reason. And it's not like being biased, far from being racist. It's just being curious on what's going on. Point and case, honestly. I was growing up, for the hundredth time I probably said this. I was growing up, I was going to school. I went to, because I'm thinking about for six, seven, September 11th. Um, Sixth grade was the first day of school for at, when I was assistant, September 11. So middle school was from 2001 to 2003 for me. High school was 2004, 2008. Um, elementary school was, you know, like 1997 to 2001 for me. So what, my, what I'm saying is, is from 1997 when I went to first grade, I had no white kids in my school, none. I think, I honestly feel like I do remember maybe one white teacher at that time and at going to Lincoln, and then it turned to Dion Wood when I was in my fifth grade year, 2000, and year 2000, it turned to Dion Wood, entrepreneurship of economics in East Orange, on Central Avenue, across from the cemetery. Uh, I'm trying to think, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, we did, I don't think we did though. Middle school, we didn't have nobody away in my school. And I went to Moore Street Middle School, and then it turned to a night school, and there's nothing now, it's just an abandoned building in the hood. Um, but I went there though, and Mr. Gregory was Gregory was our principal, rest in Mr. Gregory. Miss Sinclair, rest in Mr. Sinclair too, that was my teacher, the one I was referring to that was real tough and real harsh on us, gave me my first F, that beat on us, and then back, you know, hit on us with a ruler, yardstick, in her hand or whatever, and pulled our ear all the time. She's a, she was a good teacher. We learned a lot from her, like punctuations. I learned a lot. It's just those memories that come up first. I'm not even speaking bad about her. Um, old lady, anyway. But we had no white kids in there, man. We had none. Nobody white. So with all that being said, I remember my, one time I loved my sister so much. Shout out to you, man. I love you. But I'm not talking bad about you either. I remember my sister telling me one time we was walking down the street in Stuyvesant to go to a Chinese store. And I remember in the Vellsburg section, I remember her telling me, that um, some of my white people, I forgot how he was in talking about them. And she was like, white people smell like, what? oh, you know, it was raining. She poured up on the side of the Chinese store, up like a little bit, right, the, right around the corner. When we walked, we was going inside, and it was raining that day. And she was telling me that it stink out here. And she was like, it smelled like, like, like white people, like wet dog or something, that way she said it. And I was like, damn, what the hell does that smell like? And I, she was like, that's what white people smell like. And then I never, ever forgot that. Never, ever forgot that. That's the crazy thing in my life. When somebody says something, I'm pretty sure that happens to white kids too. When they say something about black people, when, as a young kid, you remember that. Especially when you don't see a black person. I didn't see a white person. And that's the crazy part because I talk educated, more intellectual, more, I don't know now, use a little bit more vocabulary. I really don't read as much as I used to growing up. But it's like nowadays people make you feel like you never was from those areas because they could they could never ever could be from those areas. And the TV makes them fake being in those areas, virtually being in those areas. That's what it is. So when you go at home, listen to your parents, young black men and women, young black kings and queens, my, my toddlers, my, I don't care what age you are. If you're a young girl, 
that's black, a young male that's black, share what's going on. Share it. Uh, if your parents had white kids in their school, listen to them. Just listen to whatever their expense your parents are saying. We'll never, we'll never steal y'all wrong, honestly. Y'all know that. It's just, y'all got to go out there and have that self-esteem, that courage to kind of do it, which is tough. And we always, I always say it's, it's different because it's year. It's 2023. It's not when me and your mother was growing up. Your father was growing up. You see what I'm saying? So it's different. It is very, very different right now. On top of everything that we were used to and on top of everything that we were thinking and taught and made to believe was the right thing and the, the environment that you're in on top of all those factors, it's just different right now. It is. The kids are going to do a lot more school shootings and stuff like that. But I remember when we had the school shootings there, scared out here for one of the schools. And I told, I told my boys I wouldn't tell them something for years. I'm not going to tell them something. I hope they don't watch my videos. But I said, yo, I'm not going to tell you I didn't see I graduated high school. That they had an actual shooting, a, a, a scare in their school. The school never told the students. And I told you about that. I made a video about it. The school never told. I talked to the teachers. I said, man, they said they, said they never told them. So I said, I'm not, I mean, I'm thinking about I'm not going to tell them either. And I'm always going to think about that every day. That people playing on the phone. And, you know, the kids, they do drills for that. We didn't do that as a, young, as a child, as younger. So come on now. Go talk to your parents. Let us know whatever it is y'all going through, for real. But mind you, we gotta pull it out of y'all. Meaning, if you feel like you feel like you second place, you feel like you third place, you feel like you're less than somebody else, you're not. You feel like somebody else doesn't want to hang with you. You feel like a group of people don't want to be around you. Whatever. It, 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 so what? They'll get used to it. Be yourself. Keep loving yourself. They'll love you, for real. Like. Y'all don't even know. I remember my old, my oldest is 12 right now. I'll never forget when he was going to uh, elementary school down here in Charleston. He said he he wanted his hair to be more uh, straighter. And he was like, he didn't like how his hair was. I'll never forget that. Never forget that. And mind you, he was at probably like five years old at this time. And uh, mind you, I, you know how I am. So I'm, I, he definitely loved it. So he loved, he knows his hair history and history and everything. But it didn't stick out of that time because he's only seeing white kids. So he wanted to do that. I told him, James, you just can't change yourself. So we're not going to go change ourselves. That went, we had a long, long talk. Almost like Mr. Rogers. Like, we're instilling in him that you are going to be and you're beautiful. You're perfect as who you are. Like, we're instilling, him, we're instilling in him that he is just perfect as he is. And you can't get no more perfect. You can't get less. My parents, my mother, I can't say my parents. I don't know what school my father went to. No, nothing, whatever about him. I think the only school I know about him is that he went to Velsburg High. I don't even know where that, I forget where that's at. My mother, I think, went there too. But anyway, uh, my mother, which is my father too, she knows I always say that. They, um, not they, they call my mother and my father. My mother, which is my father, she, she did everything for me in my life. Uh, and I always say you just made by yourself. But she that doesn't she doesn't like hearing that. I know black women, my our older siblings don't like they don't I mean both parents, they don't like hearing that from us. But it's just how we feel though. It's like they're not here, so why we gotta show them any type of respect. My mother always told me to respect my father though, always. But regardless of this, regardless of that, my grandmother always took care of my, my father's mother. And looking back, um that just interesting how that happened, how my grandmother was always there for my mother and for me, my grandfather too, but my dad wasn't. I told you this before. He went. My dad went and married another lady that had a son already that was named James. I'll get off of that. So my mother um, said that she had mostly white kids in her school. I think she said. I don't think she said all. Oh. And it's funny because we grew up in the same area. My mother and I. So my mother is born in the '60s. So she went to school in the you know the late '70s. Um, yep, in the mid '70s. So it was, that's interesting how she said that. And you know, I went to school 30, almost 30 some years later. And now what, I had all black kids. So my experience was very, very different. And my mother knew that growing up, watching us and grow up and raising us, she knew that. But not even different from her, it was just like period. Like she already had a daughter, so she wasn't new to none of this. You know what I mean? Just because it's a different time and the kids are more wild and represent nonsense that we shouldn't, doesn't mean none of it, nothing. So no, nothing ever important. Um, but that's pretty much it. I might have to make this a part two. I don't want to make it too long. I'm gonna go back and see where I stopped that. But yeah, go home. I got a lot more I want to say about this. Love your parents. Um, let listen. Talk to them. I'm gonna I'm sum this up real quick. I'll make another one after spring break or something like that. It's raining right now. Spring break is next week. There was just a shooting next week. Um, not next week. A shooting a few days ago about um, what was the shooting about? 
a shooting a few days ago out somewhere in another country at a church. Yeah, and I saw the article, but I didn't finish reading it. Like, I was just so surprised. Like, what is this going on? What's happening? At least, like, six people did. It was, like, yesterday. I read it yesterday. Um, what else is going on? I think that's really much that I can think of. I appreciate your time always. Um, peace and blessings, everybody. I will be back. Have a great spring break. It's a week. It's not two weeks no more. Have a great spring break. Um, peace. I'm going to still be working out. <laughs>